Johnson decided to go ahead and uh, spearhead the campaign for the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Um, it was really based on two principles. As you see here, or excuse me, it, it had a number of different parts, but the ideas were the following. First of all, poll workers, they could be discriminatory. You couldn't say all poll workers need to be white, for example. This could have a positive effect for obvious reasons. If people of different races and ethnicities were poll workers, it would be less likely that they would discriminate against the voting people themselves. Second, there is a special group of areas, covered areas, that um, were given special restrictions. Right here, special approval by judges on the federal level or by the attorney general for any changes in jurisdiction to make sure they are not discriminatory in purpose or effect. <clears throat> and in addition, they also gave an authorization for federal election observers, essentially trying to let the federal government act as an unbiased uh, third party during these cases. And covered areas, I won't go into them total, but again, it wasn't just the South. Covered areas also included, in addition to several southern states, states such as Arizona and Alaska, and townships far ranging from, well, North Carolina to Michigan or California. The reasoning was that you, it was if there was a, a discriminatory practice such as a poll tax, and if the voting uh, level in the 1964 election was below 50%. We flash forward to today, and we see um, the Shelby County v. Holder. And I know uh, both of these gentlemen will probably go into this a little bit more. But generally, what was argued in this was that the Voting Rights Act hasn't changed enough to meet the needs and the discriminatory practices of today. Why should a state or locality be penalized because of people and practices that may long have disappeared? I'll finish up my section here with the discussion of Virginia. Virginia is an interesting case. It's covered by the Voting Rights Act because in its time, it had both poll taxes and also very low voter turnout. In the 1964 election, there was just 40% turnout among voters. This indicated a very big amount of discrimination. But things have changed in Virginia. In our last election, Virginia had gone from just 40% of the vote all the way up to 65. 65% of the vote, making it one of the highest voter turnouts for the 2012 presidential election, well within the top 10 in the entire country. Now, it wasn't perfect, but the fact that 20% of the voters were African American when nearly 0% were in the 1960s does show great improvement. So why should Virginia be held for something that has long since improved upon and changed? That's what that case was about. Now, there are many implications for it, but the big thing here was, is this an effort that might infringe upon suffrage and hurt suffrage, or is this an effort to simply make things more fair? In the end, it was decided that in this case, the special districts, those I was telling you about, the southern states and some other portions as well, <coughs> were struck down as unfair because of exactly that. That places change, people change, and yet the legislation had not changed in decades. There's an option that perhaps the Congress could change something about this. And that's really the question. Can Congress do much of anything at all right now? Of course. But it will take a lot of pushing and shoving that there might not be the unity in which to do at this point. 